Okay, uh, welcome to the call uh, for the 18th of November 2020. Um, we'll just be talking about um, aspects of the accessibility specification or rather the bit of the opportunity specification that's concerned with accessibility. Um, mm -hmm. I'll just start uh, sharing the screen here. Um, suddenly quite popular mm -hmm. on instant messaging. Um, There we go. Hmm. So for some reason, is reluctant to share. What are you looking at right now, Nick? Can you see my? Um, I've just got a little twi a little twisty um spinner. Oh, okay. Has that improved? Can you see the slides now? Yep. yep okay, yep. great. Okay. So these are not really about the, the meat of the accessibility specification. This is more kind of, uh, one might say, sort of admin details uh, or um, standards details about the standard and um, formal <laughs> characteristics, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so just as a little bit of a refresher, this is an example of what the accessibility information would look like attached to an opportunity. Um, there's three components to it, one of which is simply transport note, um, simply because uh, research indicates that information about in particular public transport is quite valuable for people with accessibility needs. Um, accessibility support level is a small controlled vocabulary with, I think, three values indicating how much support people can expect if they attend the opportunity. And then most of the meat of it is in the accessibility support object, which is an array of complex objects. Um, mm -hmm. Each of which the intention is to describe some particular accessibility feature in a fairly high degree of detail. Um, mm -hmm. So the idea is that if you had, I don't know, four or five accessibility features, you'd have four or five of those objects in that array. Um, so the open questions with regard to this, the first one is just about information repetition. Um, if you look at the example, you can see that there is a slot there in accessibility support for contact point. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, this was something that kind of was, was flagged up by Sport England research, particularly that often people with accessibility needs really want to talk to somebody or at least email somebody and get a very detailed sense um, of, of what's involved and get some reassurance that they'll be, they'll be, uh, their needs will be met. Mm -hmm. um, so a contact point is very important. Um, similarly, carer policy for people who need somebody to be in attendance at the time um, it's important to, to know, you know whether that person needs to pay and so on and so forth. Um, and indeed, it's sometimes a venues that are interested in supporting people with accessibility needs will often have, um, you know, free amenities for, for carers and that kind of thing. So it could even be an advertising point. Um, mm -hmm. The difficulty, I guess, is that this could be attached at a couple of points in the hierarchy and yeah, it's kind of it could get extremely repetitive. Um, so for instance, I was looking at the active places, the way they represent disability information or rather accessibility features. Um, and they've got a fairly fine grained data that they capture, you know, it'll be, you know, are there accessible toilets? Is the parking accessible? Are all the doorways, you know, level? Um, they've mm -hmm. got eight or nine particular features that they model for every leisure center, um, which would mean eight or nine accessibility support objects in that array. Um, but presumably, in many cases, there'd only be one contact point for all of those, or there'd be at most two. Um, and yes. the policy would be global across all of those. So I'm just not too sure how to slice the pie there. Um, Is it just a case that the contact point sits at the same level as accessibility support, or as like an accessibility contact point or some, something? Yeah, I guess that's the question. Um, I guess that raises two issues. And one would be um, if, 
in the case where there's one contact point across all of them, that works fine. Um, what if you've got two, I suppose, that if you, if you had, say, somebody who's in charge of sensory disabilities and the support there and um, mobility disabilities and support there, lining them up could be a bit difficult. Well, I, I, yeah, it's an, it's, yeah, I suppose there's, a, there's an interesting thing here about like the, the level of kind of um, like how much we care about making this data like, you know, super, um, uh, I guess, I guess it's like, like overfitting the model almost. Mm -hmm. Like, is there a risk of that? For example, is it really the case that like in most cases you, you just want a kind of list of the accessibility contacts anyway because there's usually going to be one or two of them and they probably both do each other's jobs a little bit anyway and maybe they, mm -hmm. they job share and you know it, it's from a practical perspective um if there's a team they probably got a contact point you know there's um so uh, or like you know a single a single um number you can call or a, maybe a shared email address so uh, maybe you know if um yeah maybe maybe we don't need to worry so much about that maybe you know there's just an array of contact point and mm -hmm you just make sure that in the available or contact type as you've got there uh, that you just say what what that, that is and then they can figure it out themselves just thinking about where that would be kind of written on the page you've just got like a list of contacts accessibility contacts yeah and it, yeah and indeed it would presumably be fairly fairly obvious from the description or even if you contacted them i'm sure it would be a question of you know them forwarding you to the right person rather than you know, everything falling apart at that point. well but well, that's it because i suppose the question here really um is what you know what the vet the, what are we by adding the extra granularity here to the fields what are we what are we enabling to happen so i guess the driving force between but behind a lot of the fields that have been added over time to um, the kind of beta and things like that has, has usually been not around we need more free text but actually we need there's a specific type of searchable thing or you know something that has has meaning uh, that's that that needs to be added um, you know like a video or something um, we can't we can't deal with within the current thing but any extra um, free text is just kind of yeah just stick that in the description stick that in the additional information um, fields so yeah, I guess to that end, maybe maybe something similar applies here. It's like if we're adding um, additional fields, maybe it's just thinking about each one really um, kind of uh, conservatively um, about whether that's that's like what it's if it's necessary, what the value it adds over you know what what they're going to write in the description. Um, anyway, I, sorry, that's a slight tangential point, but that's yeah. So and therefore things like contact point, yeah, we maybe don't need to be so specific about. For the same reason, sure, it's yeah, not I, think, I think in terms of UI, it's about being able to separate out the accessibility information and present it as a distinct kind of information. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Accessibility description, or rather, having a description under accessibility support makes sense. Mm. Um, yes, because it's you know it is specific to that domain. Um, but yeah, at the level of, of care or policy, yeah, it's not it's not as though there's going to be a machine actionable kind of action you can take based on based on that. Right, exactly. That's the thing. So yeah, it's 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 almost yeah. Is there a um, yeah? I mean, if it's just two free, free text fields, for example, then the people who are presenting the information need to think about how to separate those out and provide headings and things like that. Yeah. Um, so it could it, because free text is just a bit more awkward to. Um, to present really if you've got one description field that can be formatted that's quite nice kind of open to most people's whatever they're capturing but anyway that's yeah that's an aside so but there's yeah, only it, one it's, it's tricky with accessibility too because it is so fine-grained in a way and it is so individual that often free text is kind of what the solution looks like um, yes definitely that, yeah the kinds of the kinds of remediations you make for somebody with, um, say, social or behavioral needs are so different from what you make yes. for mobility needs. It, it, does, it is very blobby that way. Yeah, in, in a way, it's kind of like, it's almost like HTML divs is what you're, what you're describing in the end. Yeah. yeah, and also, of course, we've got to, be, we've got to bear in mind that there's going to be people with, with dis accessibility issues reading the content. So actually, yeah, yeah having it separated, not formatted is probably 
is, is probably right. Are, are they all the fields in there, the name description? Are they, is that uh, complete or is there more? Um, I believe so. Um, that's great. No, it's a lot smaller than I remember it. But yeah, it's, it's not, it, it's sort of intentionally fairly small because we actually don't have a lot of data to leverage a lot of the time and we need to give people realistic goals about what they're, what they're going to capture. Um, that's great. Yeah. Um, sure. Okay. I know we've gone a bit off, uh, off. Oh, sorry. Sorry. One, one that isn't on there is hours available. Um, in the case okay. of, um, uh, often equipment like pool hoists and stuff needs specialized staff to to operate it, um, and so there's that's not represented here. But yeah, there's not much more to it than what you see here. So if you if you have like what British Cycling have, which is a general statement of accessibility that just says basically call this number for your needs because mm -hmm. we haven't got the information, but we want to support you. Um, where would you put that information in this structure? Um, I think in that structure, it would probably be, well, I guess that's a question about contact point then. Um, if, if it's, if because it applies across several, it should go at a higher level. Um, do we also support it at the lower level, in which case you've got two things you have to parse in order to make sure you've got a, a contact point? Um, oh, no, so, so, sorry, I was suggesting, yeah. So I was suggesting if we, if we went with kind of accessibility contact point as an array of contact points um, at the, like, event level, I guess, and the same level as accessibility support exists. Um, but then, I mean, I mean, if we did that, or if we didn't, you've still got the point of uh, the question of someone wants to write a description about general accessibility approach or policy. But I guess this is an array and it's got a name. Um, so yeah. if, if there's a thing that doesn't really have a name, it's just a general description, are you thinking that it's a uh, just got no name field, just a description, uh, single element in the array type thing. Yeah, I mean, I think there'd probably still be a name in that you'd probably call it accessibility general support or something. I mean, I would, I would assume there would be some kind of way to refer to it that you'd want. Um, but yeah, it would just be a general statement. Okay. Um, I think that would work out. You know, and then the description yeah. I guess, would be for uh, for further information. You know, we we are happy to support individuals depending on their needs. Please contact us. You know, to discuss this further. I guess something along those lines. Sure. Uh, hang on. What's going on here? Sorry. Give me one second, Tim. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Hi. Everything okay? My um, I, I, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Nish uh, has a a power planned power outage today in his village, <laughs> which obviously means everyone working from home hasn't. It? So I just got a phone call from him, and it's very hard to discern from his zero communication today whether that was an urgent problem or what. Oh um, right. Cool. It's all fine. <laughs> Sorry. Can, please continue. Uh, um. Okay. So I think. I think that's, so your recommendation, I guess, would be, yes, a distinct kind of contact point, accessibility contact point, um, living one level up. Yeah, I think that seems, that seems fair. And then I guess only, only at that level, um, so that you're not parsing it further down the, down the tree. Yeah, uh, I, th I think so. Mm. Well, I mean, the alternative is that you only have it at the next level down. And then uh, I guess I just don't, I don't know what the data looks like. Because uh, how many of these are there going to be? I think well, I think that le level above is probably. I mean, given the, the scarcity of the data, I think the level above is probably the right thing. We yeah. can always add an extra level of detail later. Yeah, and I think I think the problem is actually that the data is very spread. That, or rather, not spread, but polarized in the sense that there's most you know leisure centers, sporting organizations, that don't have a clear way to represent this. Um, 
and don't really capture the data that clearly, or at least not in a standardized way. And then you've got institutions that are specifically dedicated for people with accessibility needs and often just one right. kind of need. And of course they have reams um, and their own, their own way of looking at it. So it's uh, finding that medium that allows the more standard kind of leisure center to improve realistically, I guess, is the, is the art of it. Um, well, I mean, we could, we could include both if what we're really saying is that sometimes there's general contact points and sometimes there's specific ones. Um, you know, you, if, uh, I don't know what type, uh, the accessibility support, uh, is there, but you might be able to just inherit it from something that has contact point available anyway, you know, so that it will be very easy to add that later if someone during implementation has a burning need. Yeah. On a specific level. Yeah, I think that, I think that makes sense. Um, but keep things as simple as possible for now. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, so, um, modeling. Okay, so this is one I'd imagine that you've been over with Lee in the in the deep past at some point. This must have raised its head. So, there's a distinction mm -hmm. to be observed between accessibility information, which is really about the event. Um, you know, so if you've got, um, say, specific, I don't know, um, emotional or physical support for some particular class, uh, but then it's also in a building that is wheelchair accessible. Ah, what do you do with that? Um, do you just put everything into, do you treat the accessibility as a feature of the event, generally speaking? Um, do you put the stuff that relates to the location in the location object um, and the stuff that relates to the event on the event object or, or what? Um, I feel like for parsing simplicity, you kind of want everything to be in one place, um, but then that does a certain violence, I suppose, to the reality of, of the situation. Um, well, yeah, I guess they're saying different things, right? Um, so that what's on the event and what's on the place, sorry, is that, maybe I missed what you, what you would, would. Well, I mean, so. So do you mean, So most of the most of the accessibility that's out there, accessibility information that's out there right now, is about um, places, is about locations, and it's it's saying you know we've got um, step free access, we've got uh, disabled disabled parking, that kind of thing. Um, then there is a small amount of it which is really about if you come to this class, there will be uh, limited light stimulation or limited noise stimulation, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. which is only about that, which will only be the case for that particular hour, right? Yes. Um, now, both of those can be fit into this accessibility support array, right? You could have gym quiet time for the event, and you could also say step-free access or whatever. Um, and all of this is living on the event um, directly, so to speak. Um, on the other hand, a case could be made that the accessibility support is really in the latter case about step free access say is really about the venue itself um, and maybe what you want to do is just have a link back to the venue um, for that kind of thing because it's going to be repeated you know for everything that happens in that venue that step free access is going to be there um, so how do yeah. people want to retrieve that yeah i think the reason that it wasn't it's not in event it's sorry the reason it's not in um the reason it's not in place, I think, is because the type of accessibility that places have, which are things like ramps, you know, like physical physical attributes, um, had a different model to the type of accessibility notes that you might add to an event. Um, and I think we only focused on one of those two. But given that we're revisiting this properly now, it would seem to make sense to do both because they are different. I mean, whether you, however you're modeling that ramp, it needs to live in the place, right? Because it is an attribute of the place. And however you're modeling the, um, you know, the, the particular session that, that um, is suitable for wheelchairs, for example, wheelchair basketball session, that probably needs to be in the session. Yeah, I guess the question is, 
thinking about it from the point of view of like an end user or or an intermediary like Parasport. I mean, I guess what you want is you want to do a search on everywhere that's got step-free access. So you've got a you've got a, a wheelchair-bound user who's like, okay, you know, what can I what can I use? Yes. Um, then, yeah, I suppose it's different use cases, isn't it? Um, I think they're going, yeah, they are. going to be looking for different things. So, yeah, I think yeah, exactly. If you're looking for, but but then this leads on to a slightly separate question. So in the um, in the MCR project at the moment, we've got um, things like pool hoists, which mm -hmm. are obviously an attribute of the swimming pool, um, and the way that they're modelled using the spec, which conforms to the 2.0 spec, mm -hmm. is by extending the um, uh, what is the name of that thing. At, uh, oh, amenity. A, yes, amenity feature. Exactly that. So we've we've got additional amenity features defined, mm -hmm. which are like the pool hoist, mm -hmm. um, because because the spec allows you to extend the amenity feature to to add custom custom ones, um, and that's super useful because they want to do kind of filtering by these things, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's the use case around places is more filtering wise what's going on. So I kind of wonder whether. Well, I don't, I don't know, uh, but I wonder whether there's a, because obviously I haven't, I'm not, as I said at the beginning, I'm not the expert on this. So probably need to make sure that we've got Parasport in this conversation, well, for sure, in like use cases, in terms of use cases. But um, uh, yeah, I think, I think because they're different use cases, it may be worth thinking about that from a modeling perspective as well. Like, is it the same model that services both? You know, the one we've got right now isn't very friendly for searching across and indexing because it's more kind of free texty. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, do we want to have a recommendation around use of immunity features, for example, for places, which covers, I mean, covers quite a lot. You can put ramps in there. You could put a lot of things in there. Um, we just haven't formalized it. But I don't know. Yeah, it, it all comes back to these cases. Yeah, I think, I think the, the only, difficulty with amenity feature, which could also be seen as an advantage, but I think the difficulty is talking to people in the disability sector, there's some very, very fine grained distinctions between say different kinds of changing rooms and different kinds of toilet facilities. Okay. Um, so if you did do amenity feature that way, I think you'd want a very fine grained kind of controlled vocabulary to describe those things, which shouldn't be hard to create in principle. Um, that you know, there's there's some finite number. I mean, it's more than most people would imagine, but you know, it's it's under ten, say, for each of those. Um, mm. And well, look, I guess is is the question a use case one? Does does that does the user want to search by these things? And if they do, it needs to be a controlled vocabulary somewhere because <laughs> that's how they can, unless it's a keyword search, but that's probably not going to, you know, allow them to display the information in the icons on whatever it is they want to display. So I guess if they do, then yeah, where's the best place to put that? Yeah, I think it's tricky too, because it does get, it does get kind of fine grained sometimes. So like pool hoists have got different, you know, weight recommendations and that kind of thing. Um, Right, but I mean, if you're but if you're a user just looking for a place that can service you, mm. having a search for any pool hoist is presumably better than no search. Yeah, yeah, and again, I guess that's the point of the contact point. I guess is if you once you've narrowed it down, um, you can get that information by other means. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it would it would be really good if we do have another call on this topic. Just I know Parasport specifically very interested in this stuff. You know, having having someone from them on this because I know it's quite technical about schemas, but it's very difficult to always to talk about yeah, schemas yeah. without talking about use cases. Yeah. <laughs> you quickly drift back to what are we actually trying to do here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so then we we'd actually be looking at using amenity feature for places and then more. Um, dynamic kinds of uh, support would be going into into the event then? Well, you could, I mean, I, I, was, I guess you could do both for the accessibility support stuff. 
I mean, in, if it's helpful, again, in, um, in MCR, they've got a place, uh, sorry, a page for a place, and they've also got a page for an event as a separate pages. So you're looking at the place, you're looking at all the things that are in the place, you've got the description, the image, the, all the, the details, the video in some cases about that place, which is like a leisure center or whatever. And then that's where the pool hoist information sits, you know, and this has got these, these, this place has, you know, swimming pool, gym, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it has pool hoist. Mm -hmm. so, so, so yeah, I mean, you can imagine accessibility information sitting there as well as you could on the event page. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, as you as you say, use cases. Um, yeah, we, we have talked to Parasport about higher level issues, but yeah, I suppose it's getting into the nitty gritty. Yeah, it's more helpful to focus the mind on on this particular problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and like. I, but I think that they'd be well up for engaging in this level of discussion. Um, we've, we've had them on this call before, um, and we've had other, we've had the last accessibility call, I think we had uh, Accessibility Alliance, Parasport. Activity Alliance, um, yeah. Imagine. Uh, yeah, Activity Alliance, yeah, exactly. And then uh, and a couple other organizations, someone from Sporting, but maybe. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think, um, I think, I think Parasport were there. But anyway, yeah, they're definitely, they've been in this forum and, and definitely able to contribute in this forum for sure. So, I mean, it, yeah, definitely worth, because um, we don't have to have, we can we can gauge, we can make the technical conversation as technical as it needs to be. I mean, sometimes the way those conversations have worked um, is that we've, we've kind of had, we've bounced between the use cases and the tech in the same call. So we kind of do a little bit of use case and then, okay, well, this could look like this in the schema. Oh, but does this then work if this happens? You know, and we can kind of cross check the, scenarios with them as we go um, and get to something that's kind of got, I guess, broad buy-in. I suppose I'm, I'm a, a bit, uh, yeah, kind of thinking if we make any decisions off the back of this call, it sounds like maybe if they've, if they've narrowed the use cases, then maybe that's something we need to make sure that they're on board with. And maybe the best way of doing that is, is you know, bringing them into the forum rather than kind of checking back with them and then coming back. And things. Yeah. No, that makes, that makes sense. Um, uh, okay, so uh, the next the next point was I'll just note down an action to talk to them about that. Um, so this is about data provenance. Um, so it, the best sort of mine of accessibility information that I've seen in the sector is actually with active places, um, and but the data gathering operation there is actually pretty immense that they do. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, check on all of these things. And I gather they probably have to be pretty persistent a lot of the time to make sure that they do get the information. Um, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Um, should that be reflected in the data about what, when the last time this information was updated and who, who did that updating, basically? Um, mm. Yeah, that does sound like a good idea because it, Yes, whereas all availability information is obviously live as the system shows it, and you'd expect the description to be similar. Uh, accessibility could easily be, you know, the survey was done two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know if I'm trying to think if there's any other aspects of the data that really, that kind of um, latency applies to, but I guess not, because most things are very current. Oh, or at least most things are able to be updated by anyone in the marketing department who's trying to keep the data current. Whereas this particular information might be a bit more. Um, yeah. 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 Um, There's already a field in the booking spec that we use for the terms and conditions to uh, we'll see when they're updated, which I imagine is the same field from schema that you're looking at. So. Yeah. Okay, uh, maybe just a line there. Um, mm -hmm. I guess what's the guidance on that? I mean, to really be robust, it would have to be required. And in principle, there's no, that should be one of the easiest pieces of data to supply. Um, uh, oh, when it's. Um, yeah, the, the provenance information. Um, I mean, I worry that it, data. Data entry people are going to see this as the least important and least interesting thing to enter. It's going to be an afterthought for them, but in fact, it's <laughs> well. It, <laughs> like the rest it, of the data, you don't have to go up and collect it, right? 
And that's true. I, I was thinking it was a system level property, not a, but yeah, I see what you're saying. It could be entered as, as manually as well. Um, hmm. Because if you've got a system that's capturing this data, then obviously the last time that field was updated. Um, yeah, but I think um, if you imagine a sort of active places style workflow, right, where, where there is a kind of manual check. Uh, yes. Or indeed in social prescribing, I think that kind of manual check is going to be very, very common as well. Yeah, fair enough. Well, so the, the, the yeah, well, the property I was looking at is called date modified um, from, um, the, from schema. So, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, without, again, knowing much more about the domain, um, it sounds like a useful property to include. Okay. Um, I guess they don't need to include it if they don't have accurate data. Uh, the difficulty yeah, with required fields. Yeah, we, well, we don't, we don't want to be in a situation where we force people to supply false information to pass the validator. I mean, that's been that's something we've been fighting since the beginning. Yeah. Okay, fair um, is, we, We've definitely had people put dummy and example values in, you know, their data that doesn't, <laughs> just to pass the validator, which is completely not. The point um so but then i mean i think this is where your you know the profiles that are being developed come in potentially right so if you've got some accessibility profile then maybe this is a score on that um so it's not required but uh, yeah. profiles is a bit of a softer approach to that rather than that and mandating yeah mm -hmm. yeah because I, I think also what we've seems to have learned with required fields is it's the, the required fields are more kind of system level things mm. like what is required to make this make sense um, because if you, if you start straying outside of what is required from a system perspective, like you need the activity list property, for example, that has to be there because from a system perspective, you can't show it on the search results if it's not there. Mm -hmm. So that has to be there. But if you start mandating fields that, you know, uh, are not that like image, for example, then you can't, you can't really, uh, it, because it's, it's basically the difference between data validity and data quality. Mm -hmm. And the required fields should probably be around the validity of the thing. I mean, is this piece of data useful enough to be used anywhere? And if it's if it's bad quality, that's almost the separate. Again, I guess maybe the profiles cover that. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's useful. That's, that is indeed the whole point of the profiles. It's it's suitable for a particular use case rather than you know machine actionable. Um, right. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, Um, and then finally, modularity. Um, so this is a pretty, this arose out of a discussion with uh, somebody working for Accommable, which is an organization who worked with um, Airbnb for getting accessibility information uh, for Airbnb properties. And he said in his view that actually all sectors had roughly the same accessibility problems. Um, and that it was sort of slightly artificial to segment out one particular sector. Um, mm. So I suppose that raises the question, I'm, I'm kind of doing this back to front here, but um, should this be something that uh, gets taken to schema.org as a kind of general um, policy? They don't have anything yeah. right now covering this domain. Uh. Yeah, I'm just having a look. Accessibility summary, which seems to be uh, around a creative work. Yeah, what I've seen of schema.org, it's mostly about the you know, the electronic representation. Yes. Rather than the institution that is being described. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I think if you ping the mailing list, you'd get a really, yeah, I think you'd get them interested in this. Mm -hmm. um, if indeed uh yeah and and i think if maybe the thing to do with that is um uh propose something mm -hmm. uh like a little a little concrete um yeah. and and then uh, i mean I, maybe and just this is just a suggestion but they, they seem to the way the schema philosophy seems to be draw on the best from lots of different uh areas and then, then bring it all together. So they don't they don't specialize anything themselves. They're about what's the best in. So I guess if there's no standard for this at all at the moment, 
that we can like lean on and say we, we're drawing from this existing thing um then maybe the best we can do is you know get get all the parties we have together get them to agree on on something that, that looks pretty credible and um, put that into a github issue or a, uh, or a you know maybe maybe a markdown file in the repo or something and then post that into their mailing list and say look this is a complete x we, we were interested in in whether would you be interested in bringing this kind of work into schema.org is there is there benefit in that um because the, the other thing is that obviously schema is developing uh stuff that describes real things but they're also now describing events and um things that aren't sorry they're describing things that aren't digital anymore yeah. so <clears throat> um i guess the the difficulty from a sort of program perspective um i guess is that this is going to be a long process i can imagine this will go well, through some iterations and a lot of changes before you know it would ever become part of schema.org well i think i think yeah and but i think that's why you know, us prioritizing getting our ducks in a row first and presenting up the finished product to them because they they never, if you look, kind of watch the mailing list discussions, they never engage people in, oh, have you thought about this because of your date, you know, your domain, blah, blah, blah right? They're, they're not saying, um, you know, I, I think there should be pool hoists or not. Like they have no idea. They're just talking about it from a kind of modeling perspective and how does it fit in with other areas that they've already modeled and, that, you know, do you want to prefix that property with something to it doesn't clash with something else or whatever so i mean sometimes they get into that detail but like it doesn't seem especially this with this topic that um i feel like we we have to solve the problem first almost and then yeah. present them something credible that we've obviously all agreed on which means we probably would put that stuff in beta right ourselves and in, in adopt it in parallel and start to push it um and and see you know if we can get some adoption on on the properties as they are um, and then, and then, you know, see if we can then do that in parallel and then we can move the properties out of beta into schema as we have with the time zone stuff, um, yeah, yeah. you know, as, as, and when, and that can be a, that could take years, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but at least, but that's it, but it's a good process to engage in. And if we've already done the hard work and we're proving it every day that we're waiting for them, that's probably the thing, isn't it? Rather than. Yeah, if, if we if we have a, a situation where we're blocked on schema, we're <laughs> probably never gonna. It doesn't work that way, does it? Schema responds to demand. Yeah. So we can't, as we've seen with the API stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, I think that's not a not an immediate priority, but yeah, once once road tested and, and tires kicked and so on, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so having having dealt with the big chunky one first. Um, Starting at the top, so right now this is part of the opportunity spec. This is really, yeah, just a bunch of, I guess it would be beta properties. Um, should it actually be its mm -hmm. own kind of specification, um, which I guess is not entirely independent of the schema.org question, but um, you know, should this be accessibility 0 0.1 or something right now? Um, and yeah, I don't know. We Obviously, we've got a history of conversations about spec proliferation. The root standard turned out to be its own thing because it was absolutely massive for all the good reasons, all the great work that was done on that. Um, obviously, this is this does have a lot of overlap with a lot of the things that are already in the yeah. existing modeling spec. Um, we've got our ducks in a row around how to deal with multiple versions of specs now because all the tooling just has its own version. So we can deal with routes one, booking one, whatever two, um, and then as long as yeah, and, and and the tools just support the latest. So um, until that breaks, which it hasn't yet. So I mean, it's not it's not going to be an issue logistically having it in a separate document. Um, I, I don't know if it does it does get a bit like there's lots of documents to look at then if you're trying to implement yeah. this. Um, and you're looking for the kind of source of truth, but I guess what I, I guess what I was saying at the beginning is to uh, well, sorry, I was saying just just now is to kind of getting it into a markdown form or into a um, you know something that's more kind of rough. I don't know if you've seen uh, facility types. Facility types. Mm. 
No, I mean, it's ringing a bell, but I'm not too sure what you're referring to. Uh, yeah, so openactive.io slash facility types. It's very um, basic compared to this. Um, but it's basically a um, it's basically a repository that holds a controlled vocabulary and, and a beta property, which is <laughs> presently adopted by like a handful of the publishers. Well, actually, exactly by Gladstone and the Gladstone system, and then all of their customers. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, and this had some work that went into it. There's a GitHub issue that relates to it. Uh, you can see uh, which is in the in which we transferred into the repository from the main repository uh, from from the modeling spec repository. So um, so it kind of is its own repo for the purposes of one particular more more detailed thing. Uh, which felt more than the modeling spec, but not quite enough for a full-blown spec. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, one one route is to start with something like this, which is, uh, I guess, a bit bit briefer, mm -hmm. um, and then then use this to surface uh, to get feedback. And and if we put it in beta, uh, you know, get get beta adoption. I think the problem we've got is I don't think because of the nature of this, I'm not sure we could put it straight into the main namespace. Because oh, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it probably needs probably it's one of those things that's going to come out a bit in the wash as we go through. Yeah. No, I think that's uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So so I mean so something like this which would which is basically a beta proposal which you can imagine that example there being slightly bigger and covering what you had on the previous slide um, and um, I don't know if you've seen but you can uh, if you go to openactive.io slash ns hyphen beta or even um, slash test hyphen interface mm -hmm. um, these are all there's a we've got a, a tool that you can use to generate the documentation with the classes the properties everything yeah. and the stuff all comes from the JSON LD document. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, so, so, I mean, that might be, I mean, it comes with a JSON LD document. Uh, you could, you know, we could, you could put it in beta, you put it in its own namespace. Um, yeah, that's, I'm just thinking of different ways of doing it. Or you just have one, if you, you could just have a markdown document and just use beta, because there's not that many properties, um, and then just use the markdown document to describe those properties. Um, and give examples of of their use. Yeah, so yeah, it's almost more like a yeah. It's lots of beta properties and extensive guidance, I guess. Um, and yeah, and and like very clear signposting to feedback mechanisms. Like yeah, like click here and raise an issue if you don't like this or this or this or this. Um, okay. And then we that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully as well that will mean because I imagine with these type of things that it maybe the implementation of this will take a few months to, for people to finally engage with it. And what we've seen happen, obviously, with most of these things is that as soon as the people that are going to do the work actually engage in it properly, which happens, you know, with a, with a bit of a lag, mm -hmm. suddenly you get all this like feedback all over the place. Oh, well, have you thought about this? This isn't going to work in our interface. And you know, the whole thing gets, you know, completely changed. So <laughs> imagine yeah. that when... Yeah. That was one thing that came out really interestingly in the um, sort of workshop this morning regarding social prescribing. That one question that I had not been anticipating was, how does this relate to SNOMED, the the medical controlled vocabulary? And I was like, oh. it could. <laughs> wow. And and to a certain extent, if you look at some higher level social prescribing sites that, that don't enter that level of granularity, you can see that there is kind of a bridge between physical activity and this very granular, you know, very formal medical taxonomy. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, it's like a radical new area of work that opened up that I hadn't anticipated. So <laughs> yeah, flexibility is going to be key once, um, once engagement is higher. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I know that Parasport specifically have got a project, right, where they're going to be using and, and, and publishing this data. So I guess they'll be high on the list of people that might yeah. have the um, Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the feed question, so one, yeah, one question I noted down there was just, you know, where, where does this live? Um, and, but I guess that's actually answered a bit by the, location event kind of dichotomy. 
Yeah, this does seem like it attaches to existing stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. Rather than being its own world of thing. I guess yeah. a bit like a bit different to Roots, with it, which is like an entire sphere of its own, which is yeah. almost completely unrelated. This is very much a, a descriptive properties about the things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I think I think that that one. <laughs> it's nice to end on one of the simpler questions. I think that was where, where I was kind of leaning. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. Um, Thank you, Nick. That was extremely useful. I think you're right that obviously we do have to broaden the conversation out to um, other organizations with more sort of domain and more concrete use cases. But I think as uh, general hmm. orientation for the spec, that was really helpful. Um, oh, no worries. Look forward to seeing this, this progress. This, this has been one of the things that Open Active has been trying to do since the beginning. So really great to see the, the progress being made. It's yeah. so encouraging. So, yeah, and I think it's I think it's an issue that's gaining more traction generally. So I think I think engagement is getting easier as well. Um, so it's marrying up the the two sides. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, absolutely. Great. Okay. Thanks very much, Nick. Um, I'm sure. No we'll problem. Be soon. Okay. Speak soon. Thanks so much. Thanks.